Well, good people, hello, I'm Dimitri. Something we want to do more of on this channel is to do long-term coverage, not just for smartphones and like miscellaneous items spread throughout, but for a wider range of products. I see so many comments on our Razer reviews talking about long-term quality concerns, which is totally legitimate, right? Like we have these products for one to two weeks before launch. And I mean, to be honest, that's not enough time to see how the product has fared over time. And so that's exactly what we're doing today with the $59 Black Shark V2X headset. This has been my go-to wired headset for gaming on a daily basis for the past six months. And I still feel like my original comment from the review applies here. I'm actually a lot more excited about the V2X because at only $59, this is going to be, I think, the most popular $59 headset on the market. But as expected, it hasn't been without issues, right? So many other users have added to the whole feedback loop. And today I want to answer one simple question, whether or not this thing is still worth it for the $59 price point after six months of daily use. You have a 1200 watt power supply in there. Yep. And the triple slot RTX 3090. Sure, it will fit if you find one. And the 240 millimeter radiator. This, my friends, is the new Sugo 14 and 15 from Silverstone. The microwave, <clears throat> the ITX case you need for a no compromise build under 20 liters. Check it out below. All right, so right away, if you haven't seen the original review, check it out over here, but let's get into the issues, shall we? My main issue with the build quality is the variance in size extension. So on my budget V2X, it's been perfectly fine since day one. So nice resistance, uh, it stays in position and it's not going anywhere. But on the more expensive V2 and even the wireless V2 Pro, some of which have arrived really loose where the weight of the ear cup would slide down on the, on the size extensions without even me touching it. This shows that there's a significant tolerance difference between each headset and I've gone through six pairs, all of which had some variation of like nice density versus really loose. And so it's a risk factor for people who are buying the V2 variation of the headset because I have no idea what type of copy you will get. The next big issue I've encountered is with the four pole headset jack that isn't properly secured into that splitter cable, meaning it can easily be disconnected with a slight pull or get unbalanced signal in case the plug pulls out slightly. I have read so many reviews and also experienced these issues myself where you get unbalanced a left and right representation. So even if this four pole jack gets slightly dislodged, like slightly pulled out because maybe you kicked this or this has gotten stuck and you pulled on the headset just slightly because this connection is so loose, you'll obviously think that there's something faulty with the headset because left and right are not even. This also extends into the microphone quality where even if the four pole jack is connected properly into the splitter cable, the rotation of that connection will impact the microphone quality and the left and right balance too. So this splitter cable is a big oof from Razer because many people will just think that the headset is faulty and it will result in many negative reviews and RMAs. And I totally agree with the customer here. This splitter extension is terrible. As for all other cables on the headset, I've had no issues whatsoever. So the exposed green cable on the top, I thought might give me problems over time, but it always bends in the right way. I'm also happy at how little cable noise you hear when the cable is brushing against your shirt or something. It's quiet and muted. Next up is the microphone arm. So unfortunately it has lost a lot of its memory. So it no longer stays in the proper position as it used to before. Unfortunately, this will get worse over time and might eventually just get loose to stay in proper position. This makes me appreciate removable microphones since you might replace it later on, but also if you remove it, you're not using that bending uh, thing on a daily basis. And I also appreciate the solid boom arms from like Sennheiser headsets that are staying there and they're gonna stay there for life. Next up, I either did not notice this at the time of the review or maybe the ear cup fit has gotten slightly loose because they rotate way too easily inside the housing. The ear cushions, for example, can simply change position when you're putting the headset on or off. And this might create this non-symmetrical feel between left and right. I noticed it because the seams were not aligned and since the ear cups are oval, so they're not round, this change and rotation will affect how they seal in the sound and how they feel on your head in terms of comfort. So it's an easy solution because you can simply see where the seam is and rotate it accordingly. So right now, for example, I'll just make sure they're both facing down, but still something that 
I have to keep in mind. I am surprised at how well this fake leather has held up throughout both the ear cups and the headband, knowing that my other headphones have started to flake with this material. So both the headband and ear cups are in perfect condition since day one. But I will say this internal material, the one that makes contact with your skin is a bit harsh, especially if you like to wear one side at a time like me and constantly go from, you know, full headset to trying to hear what's happening in your external environment. And that mo motion, it's very harsh. And I don't appreciate that part of the comfort over time, simply because my other headphones that have much better padding are just a lot more comfortable. That's really the only downside with comfort because everything else about it, the clamping force and the weight are fantastic. And the last bit that has changed since the original review is the volume dial. First of all, I never got used to it being on the left side since that's my keyboard hand and removing that to change the volume. I am vulnerable in game since I'm not strafing side to side like with all other gaming headsets where the volume connection or like the, the little dial is on the right side. But the main thing here is that the volume wheel for the first 50% has gotten slightly loose which is weird because I never use that volume range anyway, while the, the other 50% is nice and resistant and smooth as day one. As for my outlook on audio performance since day one, it's kind of funny to read some Amazon reviews that express their disappointment in audio quality, but it's a $59 headset. Let's uh, lower our expectations, okay? The bass here is slightly boomy, but I appreciate that there's no harshness on the high end, especially if you max out the volume. I still stand by what I said. It is satisfactory for the $59 price point. You know, it's not gonna compete in terms of detail and resolution to something more premium, like a proper Fidelio X3 headphone, for example. But for games, I've been using it for six months. My ears are not bleeding. I can pinpoint where everything is happening and you can drive this easily with both a motherboard and a headphone amplifier without issues. Also, a couple of people who have reviewed this headset have mentioned that the volume output on consoles is a bit low to their liking. I don't own a console, so I can't really comment on that, but something you should take note of if you are planning to use this with like a with like a controller or something or plug them directly into a console. Plus the microphone quality on this pair, I would say is fantastic for the $59 price point. This is the headset I've been using for all my video calls because I sound great. I can hear everyone just fine. Two things to keep in mind is that there is no built-in side tone unless you enable it through like software or through your different amplifier. So if you don't like that muted look or sound when you speak, you can't hear yourself, that's something to keep in mind. And number two is that this boom arm has lost a lot of that uh, stiffness or firmness, so it's a lot more flexible, not in a good way versus day one. And so the takeaway for this long-term recap for the V2X is that, I mean, it's held up pretty well. Perhaps a six months window is a bit of a too short of a time frame to see proper degradation when it comes to audio products, but uh, I've been using this literally on a daily basis for the past six months, so I thought this would be a good time to you know, give you a recap. The two main disappointments, however, are that splitter cable that will cause confusion, frustrations, and definitely are a maze where people are not uh, realizing that maybe the splitter cable is causing the unbalancing and the microphone issues. And number two, those size extensions. Man, they really have to fix it so there's consistency across each V2 pair because in all six pairs, they were slightly different, slightly loose, slightly tighter, and I just kind of got lucky with the cheapest pair having like the best uh, density to the extensions and they stay in place as they should. And so to come back to that original question of whether or not this thing is still worth it for the $59 price point, and I would say yes. Even though you might encounter slight variation in the size extensions, I guess it's okay given it's a budget entry. Now it's not okay when you're spending double the amount on the V2 Pro wireless pair and you're experiencing all the same build quality concerns, but I would say for the in that fifty dollar uh, budget territory, some of the compromises that we see with this pair are okay. Uh, just keep in mind that that splitter cable. I hope you get a good one where everything just like snaps into place. It's not just like a very loose connection. But otherwise, I would say it's still worth it. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly longer recap. Share your usage history of Razer or any other gaming products over time and how they have held up in your daily usage. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video, perhaps in the six months time or something.